Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. It's the time of the month for revealing what I have used up in October and what I liked, uh, what I didn't like, what I wouldn't purchase again. Here are two items I used up that I would not purchase again. Both of them I have talked about briefly in other videos. This is the L'Oreal Skin Perfection 3-in-1 Purifying Micellar Solution. And I did a quick comparison of this with the famous Bioderma H2O, which I have used for years and is kind of a cult product. And I tried to compare the two when I first saw this uh, on offer in Superdrug a few months ago. And my feeling then was that the actual solutions were pretty similar, but I really disliked the packaging of this one. I still hate the packaging of this. It's got this um, very nice trendy square top, but basically the um, hole is too big. And uh, even if you just tip up, much less if you squeeze, you end up squirting product everywhere. And I don't like my... Um, cotton pad to be absolutely soaked with the solution when I'm using it so that was a real pain I also felt the more I used it it was an inferior um, product an inferior water to the Bioderma it left my skin feeling um, definitely a bit stickier and the other thing I felt was that I needed to scrub a bit more with it to remove um, dirt from within my slightly enlarged pores around the nose chin area and I really don't want to be doing that with um, my micellar solution so although it is better value well not better value it is cheaper than Bioderma H2O uh, in my mind no um, question Bioderma H2O is a superior product so I won't be buying this one again um I've also talked about Soap and Glory, the range as a whole, which I'm distinctly unimpressed with, even though it's reviewed very positively, or there was a spate of its products being review, reviewed very, very positively by a lot of youngish YouTubers. Um, my theory, I'm afraid, is um, knowing um, their PR connections and having tried a number of the products from the range and being distinctly unimpressed that there may have been a bit of a concerted promotion going on that was somehow incentivized. But be that as it may, um, this is a um, cream for the lower body, i.e. flabby thighs and buttocks. Um, those creams don't really work anywhere. I mean, it's good to kind of moisturize and massage that area, but um, you're living in cloud cuckoo land if you think anything that isn't a drug is going to penetrate fat to do anything about it. The gimmick with this one was that um, when you put it on and sit down, it gives a kind of warming feeling, and it does. So if you like that gimmick, well, that was interesting. What I didn't like about this was the fairly evil smell and um, appearance, actually. I think it's completely used up now. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, but it came on a bit sort of grungy and um, yeah, I, it just wasn't a pleasant experience. So I wouldn't recommend that at all unless you want to waste your money uh what else wouldn't i recommend very d negative this month uh, i had a a travel size of the rogue o'neill therapy himalayan detox salts again this is another one hugely recommended by some youtubers i bought it very enthusiastically hideously expensive didn't do a thing i found the salts were gritty and didn't dissolve even in very hot water the fragrance while it was beautiful in the pot didn't um translate well into bath water and yeah overall just a waste of money um so i've used up that travel size now as well save your money with that uh, Canyon Ranch, um, this is a posh spa in the United States. Um, this was a citrus ginger bath and shower gel, part of a kind of um, travel trousseau. Again, um, very, very ordinary. Just uh, a very light floral fruit fragrance. Didn't do anything for me. Uh, I'm not sure if I got that as a spa or you can actually buy anywhere in the UK but I wouldn't recommend it yet another negative and this breaks my heart Burberry Burberry makeup absolutely love uh, I've enjoyed all the products I've bought from the Burberry makeup range 
This was a makeup remover and uh, this was a, a free gift. So I don't know whether they're looking to move into skincare. Wouldn't be surprising if they do. But if they are thinking of that, they need to um, get their formulations a bit better. The usual gorgeous packaging with this. But this was, uh, oh, can't get the lid off, but you know the drill. Uh, I like their packaging very much, very stylish. Um, quite heavy is the only downside. This was um, a makeup removing milk and it was just appalling. It basically didn't do the job. Very watery, very liquidy. You needed an awful lot um, and you needed like a treble cleanse to shift even light makeup. Uh, one of the worst makeup removers I have ever tried. So um, Burberry, if you're listening, you need to get your act together if you're seriously thinking of charging people for skincare products because that did not cut the mustard. Otherwise, stick to makeup. Um, okay, a positive, finally. Frederick Furkai Technicolor, a Technician Colour Care Shampoo um, for treating or shampooing coloured hair. Really, really liked it. You'll know I'm not um, particularly fussy about hair care. I don't find a lot of the shampoos, expensive or cheap, make that much difference to um, how my hair feels and looks. But I did feel this one um, was worth the money. You need only a really little to lather up really well. It felt thick and moisturising, smelt pleasant, lasted for ages because you didn't need much so although it's pretty pricey stuff uh yeah I would buy from this range again I'm actually using um I think it's their thickening shampoo at the moment which I'm also liking so yeah uh plus for Frederick for Kai although horribly expensive um Chanel lift serum extreme anti-reed um the advanced corrective complex this is, sorry about that, I thought my timer had switched off. Um, this is a serum and it is in fact the second bottle I've had of this. I'm not sure I would buy it again, certainly immediately, although, you know, I did like it. I've bought it twice. Now, I bought it after, I'm such a mug, reading an article about how Kate Moss likes to use this uh, a squirt of this mixed with uh, a squirt of Elizabeth Arden, uh, is it the 12-hour, 24-hour formula, the, the famous cream, which has got a rather unpleasant smell, but is a cult product. And mixing the two together, because this is a creamy formulation, and the Elizabeth Arden is a kind of almost petroleum jelly type formulation, um, quite difficult to mix them together on the back of your hand. It's then a very sticky mask-like formulation that you put on overnight, and your skin does look good the next day. Um, kind of up there with the uh, Guerlain, um, I can't remember what it's called, the very expensive um, night treatment. So um, what I would say about this, which I've started to use on its own, you know, without the Elizabeth Arden um, mess, is that it does tingle when you put it on. I don't know whether that's good or bad. I'm not sure I felt it made a huge difference to my skin as a serum. And it feels more like a lotion than a serum. It's very thin by the standards of today's more viscous type serums. I mean, it's been on the market for a long time, long before serums became as fashionable as they've now become. So um, beautifully packaged, of course, as Chanel always are. You know, the nice pump action. I wish they'd do their moisturisers like this. Um, yeah, I'm on the fence with it. I have liked it in the past. I like it less now, but that may be because there are more fabulous serums on the market to choose from. Uh, you know the drill with the Mitchum 48 Hour, my favoured um, anti-perspirant. Used another bottle of that. Uh, oh, now this is interesting product. One of the freebies that, well, freebies, one of the big samples that came with the big order from um, Space NK. Malin and Goit Scott's American brand, Californian, I think. The grapefruit face cleanser I was prepared not to like because um, I, I don't like kind of wash off non-balm cleansers, if you know what I mean. I like balms, but I'm less keen on the lotion cleansers. Really, really like this. Gorgeous, not too 
just having a little sniff there, not too strong grapefruit fragrance, just kind of citrusy. Felt very viscousy, thick um, as you spread it on and washed off. Didn't leave my face feeling at all dried or dehydrated. Uh, and it is supposed to be, you know, a, a an exfoliator as well as a, a basic cleanser. So I would consider buying this and I definitely will try out other products from the line. I did like it. Uh, is that it? Yeah. So that's it. So really the only pluses were the Frederick Furkai and the Malin and Goitz, which I did like a lot. Um, but I did get through a lot of products this month. So let me know if you had any favourites that you finished this month and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.